From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for watching our channel this evening. I want to talk a few minutes this evening about hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia, basically, you can know by the name itself. Hyperkalemia, it's increase in the level of potassium. Okay, increase in the level of potassium. That is hyperkalemia. Now, think about the causes. Think about the level, think about the diagnosis and treatment. Those are the things we need to talk about. So it's a serum potassium greater than 5 milliequivalents per liter. So whenever you see that, like more than 5 milliequivalents per liter, that is hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia is more dangerous than hypokalemia. That's why we should treat we should give emergency treatment to people who are having hyperkalemia. There are many, many drugs that cause this problem. You, you think about ACE inhibitors or potassium sparing diuretics like a spironolactone. These medications, they cause it. And also trimethoprim, triumpterin, they block the secretion of potassium in the distal collecting ducts. And also digital is toxicity. Digital toxicity may cause hyperkalemia because it inhibits the distal collecting that sodium potassium ATPase. So let me give you the causes of hyperkalemia. If you take more calcium, like a cal uh, sorry, more potassium, like potassium supplements or antibiotics like uh, penicillin G potassium, they cause increased absorption. And also reduce the secretion like uh, type 4 renal tubular acidosis or hyperkalemic type 1 distal renal tubular acidosis or Edison's disease, renal failure. And also you see potassium is intracellular. So whenever the cells break up like rhabdomyolysis, tumor lysis, hemolysis, the concentration increases. And acidosis. Insulin deficiency causes hyperkalemia. So you see in um, diabetic ketoacidosis, what is happening? It's an acidotic condition, and it also has low levels of insulin. So both of those risk factors are present in diabetic ketoacidosis. So you see hyperkalemia in these patients. Even though their uh, total body potassium level is normal, their serum potassium level will be high. So... Now, what do you do? As I said, this uh, potassium is mostly intracellular. So thrombocytosis, leukocytosis, or hemolysis, anything that breaks up the cells, it increases the level of potassium in the blood. And also, whenever the potassium level, uh, pot uh, whenever the potassium cannot be excreted, it causes hyperkalemia. Now, what about the symptoms and signs? It causes many, many non-specific symptoms like muscular weakness, fatigue, and uh, parasthesias, palpitations. And uh, as the level goes up, they develop cardiac arrhythmias. If you take an EKG, you will see a peaked T wave. Please look on the screen in, in my back. It also develops low amplitude P waves and uh, sometimes absent P waves. And the QRS widening and ultimately resulting in cardiac arrhythmias. Patients develop ventricular fibrillation and die. So this hyperkalemia, folks, is a dangerous condition. And the other important thing is you should not depend on EKG to diagnose, to treat this problem. Many patients die with a normal EKG, okay? Their potassium goes up and they die because EKG is not that sensitive. So remember that. Don't wait, don't rely upon EKG to treat these patients. Go by the potassium level. If it is more than 6, go for emergency treatment of hyperkalemia. 
Now, how do you treat hyperkalemia? The most important thing in hyperkalemia is remember the heart. Remember the membrane potential. You need to protect the heart. Okay, that's the goal here. Because hyperkalemia is acting upon the heart. So you need to stabilize the membrane potential. And how can you treat this? As I said, most of the potassium is intracellular. So send potassium intracellularly or excrete it from the body. Okay, so into the cell or outside the body. These are the two ways. And in conditions like diabetic ketoacidosis where potassium is high, first to treat diabetic ketoacidosis that itself corrects hyperkalemia. Because the potassium just came out of the cells in this acidotic condition. So treat the heart. Stabilize the membrane potential, folks. That's the most, most important thing. So you give calcium because calcium directly antagonizes the effects of potassium on cardiac membrane potential. So you can use calcium gluconate or calcium chloride. Calcium chloride, even though it has three times more calcium than calcium gluconate. Once it extravasates, it causes a lot of uh, irritation and it also worsens its doses. That's why we prefer calcium gluconate in the treatment of emergency hyperkalemia. So in patients with the hyperkalemia associated with uh, digital toxicity, calcium administration should be avoided. Why? Because calcium potentiates the myocardial toxicity of digitoxin. So the exception is when there is a digital toxicity and hyperkalemia, don't give calcium. Now, how do you send cal uh, potassium into the cell? One way is give insulin. Insulin sends potassium into the cells. The other way is you can also use albuterol. Albuterol sends potassium into the cells. So start with IV insulin like regular insulin, 10 to 20 units, and you can give nebulized albuterol to these patients to send their potassium into the cell. So those are the uh, very, very important things. Now, how to send the potassium outside the body? That's where kaxalate, the sodium polyesterate uh, comes. So kaxalate, like 25 to 50 grams, if you give them, they will remove that thing. So kaxalate, ladies and gentlemen, is an important thing, but it is not more important than calcium and uh, insulin. They are the ma major things. And also when you give insulin, also give D50 ample because insulin causes hypoglycemia and you need to prevent hypoglycemia. So when you give insulin, you're also giving D50, that is the dextrose solution. So you add these measures up and uh, that treats the hyperkalemia. So remember, if it's more than five hyperkalemia, if it's more than six, it's an emergency hyperkalemia that need to be treated. And uh, do not rely upon EKG findings because EKG is not that sensitive. And most commonly you see peak T waves and absent or low amplitude P waves and ventricular fibrillation uh, if you leave it untreated. And also you see uh, on these patients sometimes uh, a widened QRS complex. And in the treatment, the most important thing is remember the heart and stabilize the membrane potential of the heart. So you give calcium gluconate or calcium chloride, IV insulin, dextrose, and an nebulized albuterol, and also finally uh, k exhalate because you want to remove that potassium from the body. So that's about hyperkalemia. Thank you very much. And if you have any important points, please post them for others. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.
issue. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.